Hey there, Soul Shines. It's Michelle. It's been a bit. Not too long, but it's been a bit. Um, I was driving along today and I decided to pull over to make a video for you guys. Um, I've been so busy. I've been... I have two other YouTube channels that I'm doing right now. And one of them is near daily as I am putting out kind of my cleaning journey, my cleaning and decluttering journey. Sometimes I have healings on that channel and um, I'm going to link all of them in the little circles at the end of the video. And although maybe not in the beginning of when this uploads. We'll see. I've never used the YouTube studio on my phone, so we'll see how the app works. Anyway. Um, so I have that when I doing and producing things there. I just did a huge event for me, which at the time of recording it was only me, but it was still a big deal. Um, it was an all day event where, um, I got on zoom and I recorded the whole thing on zoom. I got on and did, um, a, I did some healing work. I did six healing sessions, if you will. So we got together, we, I got on, did a healing that somebody, at least one other person is tuning into the energy. That's all I know. Um, I'm not sure how many are tuning into the energy, but at least one other. Um, I did some clean, healing to prepare for cleaning. Broke away for 45 minutes to do some healing. I mean, some cleaning in my home. Um, came back, did more healing, did another session of cleaning in my home, came back, did more healing on taking breaks. I know that was what that one's about because sometimes we have a hard time stopping um, because we're afraid we won't get back into the momentum. So we did some healing work around that. Then I went out to lunch, took my son to lunch, then came back, did more healing work did um, more cleaning, did more healing work, did more cleaning, and did finishing up. But I'm not sure if in my finishing up one if I had healing or not. I forget. Oh, anyway, big day for me. Very exhausting, but oh my gosh, it's got so much done. And I feel so good about it. So that's exciting for me. Um, what else? I wanted to talk about um, intuition. And more importantly, our spiritual senses. One thing that I really like is the concept of separating spiritual senses away from gifts. Um, I like this idea of that. So um, you may have a gift of discerning, um, but how that shows up to you may look differently. So if somebody is clairvoyant, which means they have clear seeing, that means they may look at something and discern from what they see. Um, and they may be able to know truth and right and things like that from what they see. Um, somebody who has like sensations in their body may get that sense of right or wrong and that ability to discern the right and wrong from how they feel in their body. Um, somebody with clear cognizance and that clear knowing just knows if something is right or wrong. And so um, this, the gift of discernment can be perceived in any of our senses. And so I like the idea of separating them because um, it's not really about that you have these gifts. It just has that you have all, everybody has senses and some people's senses are stronger than the others. Some people use them for intuition and some people don't. So um, I wanted to kind of talk about that. Um, and the other thing, I okay, so one of the people who teaches this, her name is Martina Muir, and um, I'm going to see if I can remember to put a link in the description to her a website where you can learn more. She, t she has a free, she has some kind of a free um, like video where you can learn about the 10 senses. And so um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about it because it was huge for me. It was a huge aha, oh my gosh, wow for me. And then um, 
not so much like learning about the ten senses was kind of cool, but also left me kind of confused. So um, one of them is claircognizance. I definitely have that. There's no doubt about it. I have a knowing about things. I even have had such a knowing that I've been able to have the ability to know what was going to happen in the future. Um, an example of that was I was told um, a guy I was interested in, I was told when he would start dating, when he would get engaged, when he would be looking for a house. Like the dating was a specific date, um, Valentine's Day. Um, and then the month of March was when he would get engaged. Um, the month of June was when he was going to be looking for a house. Um, he would get married on his birthday in December. So um, at the time, I was kind of praying and asking questions in hopes that it was for me. But it turned out that he started dating somebody on Valentine's Day. They got engaged in March. I know that he was talking about looking for a new place. I don't know what happened with that. So that June one's a little, I'm not sure. He got married on his birthday in December. It was kind of creepy how accurate it was. Um, also with COVID, I was, you know, each time something happens, it's like, okay, I've got to pray about this. You know, do you want me to take the vaccine? Do you not want me to take the vaccine? You know, what's happening with my kids? You know, all these kinds of things. So I have a lot of questions. And so every once in a while, as different things come up, I tune in again. And I had one time when I got told some really infor interesting information. I was told that if one of my kids, uh, a very specific child, got the vaccine, he would die. Um, so I, I didn't, we didn't do that. Um, but I was told exactly who in my family, like we would get COVID, who would get love, like that everybody would be fine. We would get certain levels, like some people would not have symptoms, some people would, and I was told exactly which child would have symptoms and things like that. And when we did get COVID um, at the beginning of this year, back in January, it followed exactly as I was told. Um, I didn't risk finding out if my son would die if I got the vaccine for him. You know, we didn't, we didn't go there. Um, and I think, you know, I, I'm going to touch on this for a minute, moment. Some people, the answer to their prayers or their tuning in was to get the vaccine. I am not in any way, shape or form condemning people for the choices they make. It is my belief that every single person on this planet needs to tune in and ask what's right for them. And some people have an easier time than do, of doing that than others. So I'm not saying one way or another on it. I'm just sharing an experience I had with my claircognizance, okay? So please don't comment on that. Um, so I've had this knowing, and sometimes now it's a precognitive thing, and it's a little weird for me still to, it's not like I haven't had it in the past, it's just a little weird how it's becoming more and more accurate or more and more detailed I should say it's always been accurate when I've had it it's just become more and more detailed so um, there's seeing and apparently as I've talked to somebody about it because I'm taking a, the next level class from Martina and so she, it's helping kind of really get clear on what my ones actually are and um, some of the things I was like well this is so one of the things that happens how um, I can kind of look at somebody I can tell if they're dealing with dark spirits um, or if they're like no matter what they're looking like I kind of see it's like I feel like I see their countenance but it's just like how they perceive them light or dark I don't know how to explain it um, when I take care of a plant and I like water it or prune it, I can see a difference. I don't know how to explain that because somebody else might not, they'd just be like, it's a plant. I can kind of see a difference and I didn't realize that I would, it was kind of a clairvoyant thing, but not, I don't see auras, I don't see energy, things like that. So it's interesting to consider that. Um, occasionally I hear 
But what I've learned is that a lot of the way, sorry, I keep trying to hold that in front of the camera. A lot of the way that I perceive sound isn't really actually sound. It's actually clear cognizant. It's like thoughts in my mind and stuff. And the clarity of the difference between that and how I have occasionally had clear audience, but it's not very often. Very fascinating for me. Um, some people smell, taste. My daughter can do those ones. So glad that those are my least. Um, actually, probably my absolute least is when you touch something and get information from it. I don't have that physical touch getting information. Thank goodness. But it's really interesting to learn. She's added a couple of clairs that people don't talk about because that's what she perceives with the energy. Um, so I really, I really highly recommend her. Um, so we've talked about how I don't necessarily hear. I, it's usually a thought in my head, so I kind of know things. But sometimes it's like a very clear, here's a whole sentence that I just know because I hear a whole sentence. And that's actually a part of my claircognizance. And some of the other things that um, other people have kind of lumped into the audience, um, clear audience. Well, so um, Jennifer McLean teaches about the five healer types. And the reality is, is that the, with the five healer types, they aren't necessarily directly connected with your clairs. Um, and so they can it's just kind of interesting how the two of those kind of things work together. So it, it's kind of like how gifts aren't really with your senses either. So you, the clairs are with your physical senses as well as a couple other senses. So, um, you know, like hearing, seeing, smelling, tasting, touching, those are all some that you can have clear tangents, which is clear touching, you know, like clear touching. Um, where it takes your physical sense to the next level and makes it a spiritual sense. Um, and like spiritual gifts are separate from these uh, senses, so that a spiritual gift can, you can use different senses to get the same spiritual gift, and two different people can you be using different senses to express that gift, especially when you think of the gift of healing. There's healing with my voice, there's healing with um, touch, there's there's so many different kinds of healings and some people use their sight to do healing and some people use sound to do healing and there's, so there's just different ways. And so the same way that there's different um, gifts and that they're not, a, so they're not directly, they're not correlated I guess you could say. This is the same way that healing, the healing um, modality, not modalities, modalities is actually a technique, um, the healer types. So um, I resonate most with a sound healer and an intuitive healer. It makes sense that somebody who has claircognizance would likely lean towards the, um, that is their healer type, being an intuitive. But um, it's not necessary. It could be that they have other intuitions that are coming in. Um, and one of the clairs that Martina talks about is expression. Um, that you can perceive information in people's expressions, whether it's their art, um, their music, their, the, like the way they say things, the way they write things. Um, that you can get this intuitive information from that kind of stuff, but also that you can express your own intuitive information that way, and I totally resonate with that one. I have the clearer feelings, the emoting, the empathy. Um, clear empathy is mine, clear cognizance is mine, and clear expression, those three are my strongest three, and then I have multiple others that show up as well, especially the more I use my intuition. Um, but with the healing modality, or I keep saying modality and it's not, with the healer types, the, the, the sound healer um, can hear things, and sometimes I can tune in to hear things, 
and but it's also expressing through sound so it's where the um, I think to be like a full-on no doubt about it sound healer you might have clear audience mixed with clear expression and it comes out through music through speaking that kind of thing but my clear cognizance knowing kind of counts in the clear in the sound healing along with my expression I don't know if that makes any sense to you guys it's one of those things that's like starting to make sense to my brain and not quite how cuz I I'm, I was always I'm always trying to overlap the different things and be like okay well how does this apply with this and so I'm realizing that it like the spiritual gifts the the healing types isn't necessarily meaning specifically one um, Claire although there are some of the healer types that do very much align with like there's one that is seeing vision um, so it's it's just interesting it's fascinating to talk about but mostly I'm just really excited to have that understanding because I never like I love the idea of being a sound healer but as I claimed to be a sound healer there was something about it that fell off um, and now I understand that it and I guess part of it is I have a friend who hears songs in his head I hear some of the sound healers and I'm just in awe with them and I have knowing and I have feeling and I have an expression but it just doesn't show up quite the same but it doesn't say mean I'm not a sound healer it meant that I needed more information to understand and support it and so sometimes when something feels off it's not that it's wrong it's that there's missing information or that you have one piece of the information that's wrong um, and I guess that's another part of my message is if you are feeling off in something, it doesn't mean the whole thing's wrong. It could just mean that a little portion of it's wrong or that you're missing a piece. So this is kind of the end of my ramblings. I hope that there is something in this that inspires you. That is my ultimate goal is inspiration. And as I was praying about, you know, what can I say in a video today to inspire and stuff? This is the subject that came to my mind, and I was like, okay, let's do it. So, I want to remind you guys to let your light shine big, bright, love, and beautiful. And I will see you guys next time.